Um, okay, so for this one here, you got to ask yourself are, are they independent or dependent events? What do you guys think, independent or dependent? If we just select, you know, two 40 year old males at random across the entire country. Wouldn't it be independent because it's such a small uh, percent that it basically wouldn't affect each other? Totally right. They're, they're just two independent events. So it's a, probably the first lives times the probability the second lives. Well, what's the probability somebody lives? Is it 0 0.997? Yep. So it'd just be 0 0.997 times 0 0.997. And that would be whatever, you know, whatever that works out to be. Let me see if I can load up my calculator. It would be 0 0.997 times 0.997 it's 0.994. Make sense? Okay, so what was the next question? If five are selected, what's the probability all five live? Was that the question? Okay. So we would just want to find the probability all five live. So the way you would tackle this would be like the first lives and the second lives and the third lives and the fourth lives and the fifth lives. So you just multiply them all together. So it would just be 0 0.997 times itself how many times? Yeah. So it would just be 0.997 raised to the fifth power, get you 0 0.985. Okay. And then what's the next question on there? Is it at least one of the five dies? Yeah. Well, that's sad. Okay, so um, what are the keywords in here that tell me how I should tackle this problem? Yeah. yeah. So the probability at least one dies. You're going to use the complement rule. So what's the pro what is the complement of at least one dies? That's the hard part here. Um, no, because like, uh, so what, what about zero? That's the answer right there, yeah. Because the reason it's not at least four live because at least four live is still one person could die. So it's the probability that zero die, okay? If zero die, do all five half of them, half, I'm stuttering a little, do all five have to live? So it's one minus probably zero die. Yeah, which is the same thing as one minus probability all five live, which is what we literally just found right here. And that's your answer. So, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll be completely honest with everybody. Because um, I, I actually, I teach this same class at nine in the morning and I have this same conversation with that, with, the, with, the, with my students there. Um, how many people are having like, just a, just a kind of like a poll in the chat maybe. How many people are like really like, probability is super confusing? You can be honest or not. You don't, you don't have to if you don't want to, you know. Uh, Cause I'll, yeah, 
I will be completely honest with you. Um, every, um, I'm glad my lectures help a little bit. Um, the thing about, I don't want you to think that the class is going to continue to be like this confusing because it's not. The thing about probability that's hard is it sometimes there's just not like a, um, a one, two, three, four step. Like I got to do this first and this first and this first. I think what's hard, and I don't know if you guys agree, is like you get a word problem and you're like, I just don't even know the steps because there's so many different formulas and it's up to me to how I write it. Um, like, do you guys feel that way? Yeah, and so uh, um, the good news is, the good news is, is once we get out of probability, it's not like that. Like there's just every, every like, next major topic it's like these are the steps that you're going to solve when you see a problem exactly like this okay um as a result the next exam uh does tend to be one of the harder exams just because it's like it's it's just on probability but just remember like everybody gets a dropped exam and if at the end of the class like i need to curve the class i'll curve the class it's not like I don't want people like in the, in the time of COVID, I don't want the class to be like stressing out about this, you know? Um, I hope that helps a little bit, but before I, um, before I move on, does, does uh, anybody have any other homework problems that are, they want me to kind of like talk about a little bit? Number four. So number four is the hardest problem for sure. Um, and so what I'll do is I will help you get like, uh, so you can see the first, um, the first two questions. How about that? Does that sound good? Okay. So a little bit of a sad statistic here. So um, among 21 to 25 year olds, 29% say they have driven while well under the influence of alcohol. Ugh. Suppose that three 21 to 25 year olds are selected at random. Okay, what is the probability all three have driven under the influence? Okay. Okay. So just at the start, okay, uh, what's the probability somebody has? driven under influence of alcohol. What do we say, what percentage of people in that age group? I think it was, um, yeah. So what that means is the probability that somebody in that age group has driven under the influence is this, okay, 0 0.29. So three are selected. What's the probability all three have driven under influence? Okay. Um, so this is like, just like the previous problem, okay? So the, the, what you have to do is I want all three. So it's the probability the first has, and what does the second one have to do? Second has also driven under the influence, and the, yes, right there in the chat, perfect. And the third has. So if we're selecting 21 to 24 year olds at random. These are all just independent events, okay? So it's just the probably the first has times probably the second has times probably the third has. Yep, which is just 0 0.29 to the third power because we multiply it by itself three times. And thank you in the chat for that one. Okay. Uh, professor, uh, do you multiply in probability one 
n2 or yeah so you're multiplying like this is 0 0.29 times 0 0.29 times 0 0.29 is that what you're asking yes thank you mm -hmm. So then what's the next question? At least one has not. I believe that's the next question, right? What is the probability at least one has not driven under the influence, right? Okay, what's the key words here that tell you how to tackle this problem? Okay, yeah, so that exactly in the chat, thank you. So what this is saying is, is probably gonna be uh, some type of complement rule. So it's gonna be one minus something. All right, so th this is where it gets a little weird and, and you can do this and maybe this will help. The probability at the, op the complement of at least one has not is zero has not, have not, driven under influence. So if zero have not driven under influence, yes, exactly, thank you in the chat there. The opposite of, or another way of saying zero have not is that all have. Yep, and the probability that all three have driven under the influence, we just did right here. So this is just one minus 0 0.024, yep. And then from here, you can just see how to do parts three and four. It's just the same thing. Just in terms of asking not have driven under the influence instead of have driven under the influence. Yeah, yeah. So I do want to move on just a little bit because uh, we did about 20 minutes on that. Um, and I'll say this, um, if you come with homework questions on class next time, uh, you know, I encourage you to try it more. I'll definitely like work, you know, work more problems for you. Okay. Sound okay, everybody? Okay, so last class we were talking about, um, gosh, we did this fundamental counting rule. Uh, and I think we did like how many, let's see, we did, Matt, how many outfits, how many work outfits, unique work outfits I have. And then we did the probability you guess my pin number on my debit card. And then we did something about stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. Do those all kind of ring a bell to people? Hope so. So I want to start off with uh, uh, just another example of the fundamental counting rule, okay? And let's say, suppose uh, New Jersey, my home state, okay, wants to issue everyone in the state a new license plate. Okay, and maybe like it's a, maybe they want everybody to pay for it. Okay, maybe they're like, oh, we need to raise money. So you have to buy a new license plate. Okay. The license plates will consist of two letters followed by four digits. Okay, how many possible license plates are there? Yep. 
if repetition is allowed. Okay, so what I mean by repetition is allowed is I could have a license plate that looks like this. A, A, one, 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 okay? Or I could literally have a license plate that's Z, C, seven, six, five, four, whatever, anything like that, okay? Uh, so I want to count the number of um, uh, possible license plates for this, okay? And so this is just the fundamental counting uh, rule, okay? Um, I have a task I need to complete. And the task is uh, constructing the license plate, okay? And the task consists of a sequence of six things I need to pick. I need to pick the first letter, the second letter, the first digit, the second digit, the third digit, the fourth digit. Okay. So for the first digit or the first letter, how many options are there to choose for the first letter here? So basically how many letters are in the, yep, 26. Now if repeats are allowed, how many options are there for the second letter? Yep. Now for the first digit, Okay, digits are going to be between zero and nine. Okay, yep, 10. And then 10 for the second digit, 10 for the third digit, and 10 for the fourth digit. And the fundamental counting rule just says, look, if you want to count the number of ways this can happen or can be formed, you're just going to multiply. So I'm going to grab my trusty calculator. Okay. It's just just 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Gosh almighty. Okay, so there's uh, looks like there's 6,760,000 ways you could do this. Okay. So kind of ring a bell from, from last week. All right. I got two yeses. <laughs> All right. I hope it does. I hope, I hope this, you kind of remember this from last week. Okay. All right. So I want to talk now uh, about a symbol in mathematics called the factorial symbol. Okay. And the factorial symbol is just an exclamation point. Okay. And it might be something like this. If you ever see in mathematics, yep, I can go back. Of course, of course. You're welcome. So in, it might be something that looks like this. Uh, five followed by an exclamation point. Okay. Has anybody seen this in mathematics before? Okay. One person, couple. Yeah. This doesn't mean like five, like you're yelling it. Um, this factorial symbol is a mathematical operator. Okay. And the factorial symbol, five factorials, define the following way. For an integer greater than or equal to zero. So integers are numbers like zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's no fractions or decimals. Okay. The factorial symbol. Okay, this exclamation point is defined as So we use the factorial symbol to count like the number of ways you can arrange objects. Okay. All right. So if you have zero objects, okay. So zero factorial, how many different ways do you think you can arrange zero objects like on a desk? It's actually a trick question. 
tricky question ish. Well, the answer is actually one. The number of ways you can arrange zero objects is one way, like that there are no objects to arrange. So it's one way you can do it. Uh, one factorial is just equal to one. So like if I have one object on the table, the number of ways I can arrange it is one way. Now n factorial, okay? So this would be a number like, like I was saying here, five factorial. You start with n, whatever the number is, five, like five here. Then you multiply it by n minus one. Well, what's five minus one? You'd multiply that by four. Then you'd keep going to n minus two. And you would keep doing that until you got to three times two times one. So five factorial is just five times four times three times two times one. Okay. So five times four is 20, 60, uh, 120 and then times one. So there's 120 ways, right? That's what five factorial is. Make sense? So if it was like seven factorial, it would be seven times six times five times four times three times two times one and so on. Okay. <laughs> good news is, um, the good news is, is I'm going to show you, um, how to use your calculator to do this. So I hope, um, I hope many of you brought your graphing calculator or, or have it handy because I'm gonna show you how to do this in the calculator in a second, okay? Uh, how about I do a, an example of how this might come up for you? Right. Is everybody, everybody okay if I move on? Just give me, a, can you wait a second please? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. The calculator saves the day. The calculator will save the day in this class very, very often. Okay. It's kind of like when we did the regression stuff, like we did it by hand once and then we were like, oh my gosh. And then we did it by the calculator and the calculator made it easier. Um, for somebody advanced stuff in this class, it's going to be the same way. Okay. All right, so um, suppose Matt, that's me, wants to make a playlist of his 10 favorite songs, okay? All right, so I used to like, um, do this with like, oh, it's for my commute. So my commute to work, I wanna do a playlist of my 10 favorite songs, all right? In how many different ways could he arrange the 10 songs? Okay. All right, so like suppose I have these songs over here, okay? You know, song one, song two, you know, song three, whatever, okay? Um, and I wanna figure out the number of different ways I can arrange them. All right, so actually we're gonna solve this with the fundamental counting rule, okay, to, so to help you see this. Um, so I've got 10 songs I wanna put in my playlist, okay? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. How many options do I have for my first song here? To, how many options do I have to lead off the, uh, the playlist? Yep, okay. Suppose I'm like, oh, you know, I want to pick song number three. It's the, you know, it's a song from the Hamilton soundtrack or something. I don't know. Okay. And I put that here. Now, when I go to select the second song in the playlist, all right, how many options do I have left for this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just nine. 
Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'll put this song there. Now for the third song, how many options do I have? Yeah. And then for the next one. Yeah, and then six. Yep, and five. Yep. Perfect. Yep. So the fundamental counting will just says to multiply this together. Okay, and if you notice, just going back a slide, like this 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 looks exactly like this 5 factorial, okay? So what would this be then? Could I write this as, yeah, 10 factorial? Yep. Yep. So here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to grab your calculator and you don't want to put in your calculator 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. You don't, you just don't want to do that. Okay. So how many, if you have your calculator, take it out. Okay. I have, can you guys see on the screen here? I have both the TI-83 calculator and the TI-84 emulator. Okay. So you'll notice on all your calculators, you have this button called math. Okay, you guys, can you guys see it on my mouse? There's the math button here and the math button here. Okay. On the TI-84, press the math button. And then on the TI-83, press the math button. You see this option called PROB, and then over here you see PRB. So PROB and PRB. Scroll over to that, okay? And does everybody see option four? It looks like an exclamation point. Okay, that's the factorial, okay? So what you don't wanna do, okay, is you don't just wanna press number four now, okay? So everybody quit out of this real quick. So quit and quit. What you do to do this in your calculator is you type the number first. So I wanna find 10 factorial. So I'll start with the number 10 here and then I'll start with the number 10 here, right? Then I'm gonna hit the math button. I'm gonna go over to PROB and I'm gonna go down to number four and hit enter like that. And then over here, I'm gonna to go to my math. I'm gonna go over to PROB. I'm gonna go down to number four. And I should see that. So in both cases, just hit enter. So the number of different ways, literally, that you could arrange 10 songs is 3,628,800 ways. Wow, is that crazy or what? Everybody kind of follow along with how I did this in my calculator? Okay. So it's 3,628,800 ways, which is crazy, but that's the right answer. You know, it just, it, it blows up really, really quickly. Okay. All right, let's try, uh, let's try this one, okay? Let's do it, let's do just another one, okay? Your cow was too zoom, I can't see, I don't know what that means, I'm sorry. Your calculator, when you pull up the calculator, it was too big, so I couldn't see what you were, the process you were doing. Can you see this now or no? Yeah, yeah now you can see. So make it a little bit smaller like that. Yeah. Is that better? You guys got to forgive me. I have this big, um, so I work from home so much. I have this big like 30, 30 inch all in one computer that I work off of. So like everything is just so big on my screen. And I'm sure like, I bet a lot of you guys are working on like laptops and stuff. So I'm really sorry if I, you know, uh, don't, don't account for that. I appreciate the, the one person who says it's okay. Um, 
Let me just try uh, this problem here, okay? Let me try this one. Suppose there is a race, like a running race, of let's just say eight students. Okay, so eight students are just gonna go for a run and they're gonna race, okay? In how many different ways can the eight students finish the race? Okay. So what we're doing, looking here is we're looking for the total number of ways to finish the race. Okay, so what that means is you have to figure out um, how many different ways you can arrange it so the person comes in first, then second, then third, then fourth, then fifth, then sixth, then seventh, then eighth. Okay. Well, how many options do you have uh, for the first first person? Yep, yep, you're exactly right. It would be eight, and then times seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So Pauline is exactly right. This is just eight factorial. So again, you just want to have your calculator do this for you. Uh-oh, can you guys hear my, uh, my little guy? Poor guy's waking up from nap. Ah, uh, yes, I appreciate the awe, uh, yeah. You know, especially at like three in the morning, it's great, you know. Oh, I love him. He's a 10 out of 10. I'm just kidding. So you want to type uh, the first number first. You want to go eight. And then in both cases, you're going to press the math button. You're going to go over to PROB and you're going to go down to the factorial. Over here, you're going to go math over to PRB. I don't, uh, usually because he's hungry. That's why he usually cries. Yeah, but thank you in the chat for it's 40,320 ways. So this is a, a lot. Okay. All right, so it makes sense. All right, let's, um, let's move on to our final two um, counting methods and then we'll be done with counting. So, yes, okay. And this is combinations and permutations. And it goes like this. Suppose you want to select R objects from n objects, okay? So to go back here, what I mean by r and n is I would say something like, and how many different ways can the top three runners finish the race? So I would be picking three runners from eight, okay? That's what n and r means here, okay? In which, so there's some rules we need to follow if we're gonna use these things called combinations and permutations. The first is, is that R is less than or equal to N, okay? So meaning something like, I can't, I can't say, how can I select 10 people from five? Like that doesn't make sense. It has to be like, how can I select five people from 10? The second rule, each object is unique. Right, like the runners of the race, okay, they're all unique people, okay. The third rule, once an object is selected, it cannot be 
select it again. And the fourth rule is really the most important because there's two parts to it. Okay, when you select R objects from N, you can have either order is important or the order of selection is not important. Okay, these problems after you see me do a, a few examples, um, you're gonna notice that um, the, the hard part about these problems is just literally figuring out if the order is important or if the order is not important. Once you figure out if the order is important or not, you just straight up follow a formula and it's, and it's no big deal. If the order of selection is important, this is what's called a permutation. If the order, of import, if order is not important, this is what's called a combination. Uh, what, so you don't see, do you see my mouse here or no? Okay. Can anybody else not see number four here? Yeah, really, it might be just, um, it might be something going on in, in your, um, with your computer, you know, you, what you might want to do is um, like either log out and then log back in real quick. Generally, a lot of times that'll fix it. Um, I, I give that a shot. Okay. okay I'll try. I'll, I'll log in again. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem. Technology's tough, you know. While we're, I'll just give her a second, but um, I'll tell you guys a joke if you, while we're waiting real quick, if you want to hear one. Uh, why was the, um, why was the bicycle, why couldn't the bicycle stand? It was too tired. Get it? Too tired? Thank you. Thank you. It's a dad joke for you because I'm a dad. Okay. Um, so let me give you the formulas for these now. Okay. It looks like, it looks like Liliana's back. Hopefully it resolved her issue. Um, permutations. The way it looks like is this. Rewrite it as N P R. Okay. And that's a subscripted N and a subscripted R. This is read as um, uh, n permutations of r or n pick r objects, okay? And this is just the following formula. It's n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, okay? So for example, if I had eight pick three, okay? This would be written as eight factorial divided by eight minus three factorial, which would be eight factorial divided by five factorial. All right, combinations, they're written as NCR. All right, so it'd be N combinations of R, or you might hear me say N choose R. Kind of a similar, similar formula. It's N factorial divided by R factorial times N minus R factorial. Okay. So for example, here, if I wanted to do eight choose three, my N would be eight here. So this would be eight factorial. My R is three, so three factorial times eight minus three factorial which would be eight factorial over three factorial times five factorial. Okay, so do these formulas look fun to use here? Or do they look kind of like it? Eh? All right, so that's super fun, okay. 
So the good news is um, your calculator does these as well, okay? So let's load up our trusty calculator. It doesn't matter which one you have, okay? Now don't press anything yet, okay? But if you just look on my calculator here, on the math button, if you go over to PRB, options number two, you see NPR, and option number three, you see NCR. All right, so let's, let me show you how to do eight pick three. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna type in the first number eight. Okay, on both calculators, it doesn't matter, okay? Then you're gonna go to the math button. You're gonna go over to PRB here. You're gonna go down to number two. All right, you're gonna hit enter. And then you're just gonna type three because I wanted eight pick three. And you should get 336. Over here it was eight. You're gonna hit the math button. You're gonna go over to PROB. You're gonna go down to NPR. And notice how it just puts the eight right there for you. So it's gonna be eight pick three. And you get 336. Easy with the calculator right there? Okay, let's do the um, eight choose three now, okay? So again, you're gonna start with the eight. You're gonna go to math. You're gonna go over to PRB. Now you want eight, you want choose here. So again, over here, you're gonna start with the eight. You're going to click on the math. You're going to go over to PR3. And you're going to type the three. And you're just going to hit enter. And you should see you got 56. Not too bad using the calculator. Professor, can you go over again? I got lost. So how to do this stuff? A second. Like how do you plug it in the calculator? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay, so the first, so let's just say I wanted to do uh, eight choose three. All right, which type of calculator do you have? The TI-83 or the TI-84? TI-84. Okay, so you're gonna type the first number, eight. You're gonna go to the math button. You're gonna go over to PROB. You're gonna go down to number three. You're gonna type the second number three and you're just gonna hit enter. Thank you. Now you got it? Yes. All right, everybody else okay? All right, how about we take a 10 minute break real quick? Does that sound okay to everybody? Can you leave this uh, on? I want to yeah. copy this. Yeah, Good. see that okay? Like that right there? And I'll say we'll come back at two o'clock. Okay, so I'll, I'm gonna take a, uh, a quick break. I'm getting a text from my wife that I should go talk to her during break time. So uh, I'll be back in a bit and hopefully I'm not in too much trouble, okay? That was a funny joke, guys. I'll see you at two.
All right, we'll, uh, we'll start back up in a minute. Uh, good news, I was not in trouble, so all is well. That is a very true statement. All right, so let's start back up. Um, everything is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would. Um, so what we might do is, I don't know how far I'm gonna get into this. What we might do is I might end up giving, um, yeah, we'll see how, 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 how the schedule goes, but if, if things end up taking longer than I thought, maybe we'll just end up giving the exam as a take home the next one, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I bet everyone would prefer a take home exam probably, correct? So let's, um, of course, <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's see how, how the next two days go, okay? Um, all right. So now let's work some problems related to um, combinations and permutations, okay? So I want to do an example first about um, Saratoga Racetrack. Does anybody know what the Saratoga Racetrack is? or what Saratoga is famous for? So I used to, I grew up outside of Saratoga. Um, and so Saratoga has the oldest horse racing track in the country. Um, so every summer, uh, even this summer with COVID, they still had the, the races. Um, uh, they have these uh, every day, uh, six days a week, they, during the racing season, they have horse racing up at the track. And it's really, it's, um, it's, a, it's an interesting experience if you've never gone. So if you ever find yourself up at Saratoga when COVID is over and the races are going on, I encourage you to check them out. Um, all right, but anyway, so there's this, um, there's this bet, okay, on, in horse racing you can make called a trifecta. Okay. I'm just curious, does anybody know what a trifecta bet is? What's a trifecta bet, Tora? Yeah, okay, so there's this bet. So, what you have to do is you have to guess correctly how the top three finishers in a race will come out. Okay, so you have to guess the top three racers, okay? 
So there's actually kind of a funny story behind this. So um, we used to go with my family a lot when my, I, I have two young nephews and, you know, we would give them like, you know, 20 bucks to start the day and we'd say, you know, hey, you know, my nephew was Tyler. Tyler, you get to, you know, bet your $20 and you get to keep your winnings. And so um, I, I would always be like, let's do a trifecta bet, Tyler, and we'd lose. And so we came to a race and it's a 12 horse race. Okay. And my nephew says, Uncle Matt, you know, let's just buy every possible trifecta bet so that we guarantee we win. Okay. So in a 12 horse race, how many possible trifecta bets are there? So I had to tell, I had to go, Tyler, well, we can't do that. Here's why. Here's how many, how many um, tickets we'd have to purchase. Okay. All right. So this is an N and R problem. Okay. So how many total horses are there in this race? Okay. So that's my N that's, that's right there. Okay. But how many horses do I need to pick for the trifecta bet? Okay. So that's how you know it's an N and R problem. I have 12 horses, but I only want to pick three. So the next thing you have to ask yourself, does order matter? Right, because if it's a, if it's a, you have to decide now, is it a permutation, the order is important or is order not important? Okay. Yeah, order is definitely important. It's a race, right? Like if I, if I select my um, horses, if you've ever been to a horse race, they all get, they all get names, you know, like Sea Biscuit War Horse, I don't know, Captain America, I don't know whatever the third horse will call, but it actually comes in War Horse, Sea Biscuit, Captain America, I lose. So the order is important. So this is a permutations problem. So this would be, there's 12 horses that start the race. I need to pick three. So I'm just gonna load up the TI-84 for this. So at this point, once you have this, you can just go right to the calculator, okay? You start with the first number 12, you go to math, you go over to PROB, you go down to number two, and it's 12 horses and I wanna pick the top three finishers. And that's just $1,320 or 1,320 ways you could do this. So I had to tell my young nephew at the time, like we can't do it, you know, we'd have to buy 1,320 tickets. And I think he was just like, yeah, no, Uncle Matt, you're an adult, you can do that. So just go do that. <laughs> what does R represent? R represents the number of objects you're picking. Okay, so N is the total. Yeah. And R is how many you want to pick. Okay. Okay. So th this will just be uh, generally the questions I'll ask you races uh, are permutation questions. Like if you look on your homework, uh, I think I closed it down, but if you, you know, one of the questions under number nine was number of ways the top four races in 20 in a 20 person race can finish. Well, your N would be 20 and your R would be four. And this would be a permutation because it's a race. Okay, make sense? Okay. Let's do another, a different one, okay? Anybody, you still need to copy this or good? Uh, Professor, just a question. Uh, how many possible, what does he say? The second word? Uh, trifecta bets. Thank you. Okay. 
All right, let's try this one. Um, just recall, okay, the math department at WCC has uh, 16 full-time faculty of which there were, if you remember, there were nine female faculty members and there were seven male. Okay. If two are selected to be on a committee, okay, in how many different ways Can that committee be formed? Okay. So basically just think about it like this. Okay. Suppose like, um, you know, we got our math department meeting this Thursday and the chair goes to us and says, okay, I need two of you to be on a committee for textbooks or something. So I just wanna know how many different ways can that committee be formed, okay? So how many total faculty are there to choose from? Okay, so that's my N, that's my total number. Okay, how many do I wanna select? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's my N and R. You can see right there, there's 16, but I only wanna select two, okay? So the, all you have to ask yourself now, does order matter? Okay, why do you say order doesn't matter? You're all, you, I'll, I'll help you out, you're all correct. It does not matter, but why does it not matter? Anybody got a guess why it doesn't matter? So the reason it doesn't matter um, is because, look, all we wanna do is form the committee. If you're selected first or second, are you still on the committee? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, yes, you're still on the committee. So it, does, so it doesn't matter here, the order doesn't matter. You only if you're on the committee or not, okay? So that means this would be, I have 16 people and I wanna choose two of them to be on the committee. So just using my calculator, you, you're going to type in the first number 16. Then you're going to go to math. You're going to go over to PROB. You're going to go down to NCR. And I want to choose two of them, 16 choose two. And there are 120 ways you could form this committee. Okay. Make sense? So like just real quickly on your homework, um, you know, the second question says the number of ways you could select six students from 30 to serve on a student review panel. Um, you know, my N is 30, my R is six. And it's like, does, does order matter here for being on a review panel, the order you're selected? So like, no, because if you're selected first or sixth, you're still on the review panel. So in this case, that would just be 30 choose six for that homework problem. All right, but let me, let me ask you a, a, a harder problem here, okay? What's the probability that two females are selected for the committee. Hmm. 
Okay, so now all of a sudden we are doing counting, but now I'm gonna ask you a probability question. Okay, so I wanna figure out the probability that two females are selected for the committee. Oh man, I have no idea how to do this problem. Does anybody have a suggestion? Absolutely. So you could do it as the first is female and the second is female. So I actually want to show you now how to do this, um, believe it or not, with combinations. Okay, so you can see an alternative way to tackle this problem. Okay. All right, so the probability you select two females. Okay, so it's a just a division problem because it's um, uh, a probability question. So it's just the number of ways to select two females. And you would just have to divide that by the total number of possible committees. So let me ask you this, do we know the total number of possible committees? What is it? Yeah, yeah, this it's right here. So it was 16 choose two, okay. So now we just need to figure out uh, how many ways you can, how many different ways you can select the two females, okay. Well, how many total female faculty members are there? Yeah, and how many do I wanna select for the committee? Yep. Yeah, so this is just another way you could do the dependent problem, okay? We know the denominator, 16 choose two is 120. So now we gotta find nine choose two. So you just go nine, you go to math, you go over to PROB. You're gonna go down to this. Nine choose two, and it's 36. So this probability is just 36 out of 120. And you just get 0.3. So I thought that was cool. It's just another way to do a problem that we've already done before in class. Oh, this one's much easier. Then the first is female and the second, yeah, that's okay. You could, you could absolutely do it this way. Yeah, yeah. If you think this is easier, that's totally okay. I'm glad, to, I'm glad I showed it then. So things like committees are gonna be combinations and then things like races are gonna be permutations, okay? All right, what do you guys think we do our last probability question? Are you guys excited for that? Last counting question here. <laughs> Very, yes. All right. So what I want us to do now is I wanna talk about the Powerball Lotto, right? Or the Powerball Lottery, okay? Um, has, uh, does everyone know about the Powerball, Powerball lottery? No, it's kind of like Mega Millions, just, just the Powerball. So it's played across a bunch of states. Um, and so I am a, uh, before I could, before I, <laughs> this is a bad joke, but before I could leave my house, I used to get lottery tickets all the time, even though I knew the probability of winning. Um, it was just a fun thing for me. Like I buy a $1 Powerball, it's, although it's $2 now, I buy a $2 ticket and I, you know, I'd go home with my wife and I'd be like, okay, we're going to win this time. So when we win, what are we going to do? So let me explain the Powerball lottery. Okay. 
to win the lotto, to win the Powerball, you must select, and this is correctly, obviously, five numbers from the numbers 1 to 69, okay? So let me put a little bit more context here, okay? So if you've ever seen a lottery, I'm just curious, has anybody seen a lottery drawing live? Not many people have. Um, what they have is they have this big basket of, of balls and they have the balls numbered one to 69 in them, okay? And they spin the basket and then the balls come out one at a time, okay? So all you have to do to win is you have to select five numbers from the numbers one through 69. Okay, that's not too bad. It doesn't seem that hard. It turns out if you do this correctly, they'll give you a million dollars. Um, but what you then need to do, then you need to select one number from the numbers 1 to 26, okay? And this is called the power ball. So there's another cage of balls with the balls numbered 1 through 26, okay? And you have to select one from here. Okay? Does that make sense to win? So like, for example, I could run, I could do these numbers here. I could pick 2, 3, 22, 28, 60 as, as my five numbers from here. And then I could pick the Powerball 15, okay? And I could play that. So my question is this. With a single ticket, what's the probability Let's, let's just pretend it's me. Matt wins Powerball. All right. So let me ask you this. I, I, it's tough. I can't see everybody's faces, but does everybody, does it make sense like how you have to select the numbers for, for the lottery here? Okay, but like, um, I got one, eh. As, I'm just curious, has anybody bought a Powerball ticket before? I mean, well, you're smarter than I am. Okay, I got one person active in the chat, okay. All right, so let me walk you just through this problem. Okay, so I'm gonna buy a single ticket. Okay, imagine I'm gonna go to the store and buy a single ticket today. I want to find the probability I win. Okay, so it's just the division problem. So the numerator is going to be the number of ways to win with a single ticket. Okay. And what I have to divide this by is the total number of possible tickets. Okay. All right, if I am gonna buy one ticket, okay, can anybody tell me the number of ways I can win with a single ticket if I'm only gonna buy one ticket? So like what goes in the numerator here? Yes, thank you, Tora. Yep, one, yep, one. So now I just need to figure out the total number of possible tickets. All right, I have no idea how to do this. Does anybody, anybody got a suggestion maybe? I don't know. Would you do um, 
69 multiplied by 68 by 67 by 66 by 65 and then by 26? You're very close. You are incredibly close. You're off just a little bit. Okay, so let me, let me help you guys, okay? Uh, but that was like a, a fantastic guess, okay? Awesome. Usually people, usually students don't even get that far. So that was a, a great, great guess, okay? So we're, we're gonna start with the fundamental counting rule, okay? I have a task I need to complete, okay? And the task is I have to pick my winning lottery tickets, okay? My winning lottery numbers. And the first thing I have to do is I have to select five numbers from here, okay? So the first thing I have to do is I have to select five from how many numbers? Like how many possible numbers are in this basket here? Sixty-nine, right? Like there's sixty-nine numbers in here. I have to select five from sixty-nine, and then what I have to do next, I'm going to multiply it by, is I have to select the Powerball. Okay, from one number here. Okay. All right, so notice here it's select five from 69. This is an N and R problem. My N is 69 and my R is five, okay? So the next thing you have to ask yourself here is, um, does the order matter here, the order of selection? Okay, so I got one yes, okay. Anybody else think differently? Got two yeses, okay. So it's weird, so let me ask you this. Imagine you're watching a lottery live and they're spinning the basket, okay? And the numbers are coming out, coming down, down into, the, um, into the results, okay? Do you think the numbers come out exactly in order? Like the two comes out first, then the three, then the 22, then the 20, then the 60? Do you think they come out in order? They don't. Yeah, they don't come out in order. So what happens is when they report the winning numbers, they just put them in order. Okay. So that like, you know, people, it's easier to, for people to read. But like, if I pick my numbers and I'm say, hey, I want a three, and then I want the number two, then 60, then the 28, and then the 22. Did I still pick the winning numbers if these are the correct winning numbers? Yeah, yeah, I just didn't pick them in the right order. So the order doesn't matter. So is that a combinations or permutations problem? It's actually, it's combinations. So it would be, I have 69 balls and I wanna choose five of them. All right, and then I have to select the Powerball, okay? I have to select the numbers one through 26. How many, um, don't overthink this. How many possible options are there for the Powerball? Yep, so just times 26. So let's figure out the number of ways you can select the five balls from the 69 in which the order does not matter, okay? So I want to do down here, I want to do 69 math, go over to PRB 69 and then choose. So it looks like this is, there's 11,238,513 ways you could do that. Okay. But then you need to multiply that by 26. Okay. Cause you still have to pick the Powerball. And the probability that I would win the Powerball lottery with just one ticket is 292,201,338. So one in 292,201,338. All right. So is it, is it very likely that when I keep buying my Powerball tickets that I'm gonna win the lottery?
What do you guys think? It is not great odds. Okay. Yeah, but you know what? Somebody wins, right? Somebody wins the lottery. So why not me? You know, that's, that's, that's my thinking. You know, if someone's going to win, I don't know why, it, you know, can't be me. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So how about we get away from um, counting and probability for a little bit here? All right. So what I want to, what you can do now on your homework, you can do problems nine and 10 on, and 11 on your homework after watching me do all these counting questions. Um, what I want to cover now is, is problems seven and eight. And we actually won't get to problem seven and eight until Thursday though, okay? So if you just bear with me, I just want to lecture for like a couple more minutes here. And if you look back in the, um, in the lectures in the classroom, under week six, I put up this um, blank PowerPoint that I just want to kind of, uh, kind of start with you guys now. All right, so just, uh, we'll just finish up a little bit here if that's okay. So I just want to talk now about um, our next section of the class. And what our next section of the class is going to be about, it's going to be about these things called um, random variables. Okay. In this section, we cover discrete random variables. Okay. Have we heard the word discrete before in this class? Yeah. Yeah. So like, um, what does anybody remember what like a form like kind of just an informal definition of a discrete variable is? I sometimes refer to them as counts, like they were counts, yep, countable. But the big thing is, is there's a finite number of outcomes. Okay. All right. So when you hear the word variable in mathematics. Okay. Uh, what letter do we generally let represent a variable? Yeah, yeah. generally X. Yeah. So it's going to be X and Y. And this we're just going to just stick with X because it's a single variable. Um, so we have a finite number of outcomes, random, so we don't know the actual outcome. And we're going to define that value as a variable X. All right, so let me give you. Um, just a quick definition of this. So what exactly are random variables, all right, in our class? Okay. So a random variable is a quantitative variable So we've heard the word quantitative. Okay, it's a numerical measure of some type is a quantitative variable whose value is determined by the outcome of a probability experiment. What I mean by that is its, out, it's, its outcome is determined by chance, okay? So in this class, there's gonna be two types of random variables that we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about discrete random variables. Okay, the big thing about discrete random variables is there's a finite number of possible outcomes.
And then, so this is going to take us like two classes to talk about discrete random variables, okay? Then what we're going to spend a ton of time talking about is continuous random variables. Okay. So have you, have I used the word continuous before in this class? Or have you seen the word continuous before? Yeah. What yes. Is, yeah. So these, these tend to be measurements of some type. Um, but the thing about continuous random variable is theoretically there's an infinite number of possible outcomes. Yeah, I think it might just be you. Can everybody else see what I'm typing or writing here? Is that anybody else having a problem? Anybody else can see it? Yeah, Liliana, I'm really sorry. I, I, I wish I could fix it for you. But I, I don't know what to do. If, if logging out and coming back in didn't work. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe next class it'll be a little bit better. Maybe like, um, I'm almost done with lecture today. I just want to get through just the next part a little bit here. Um, maybe next class when you log back into Zoom, it'll be fixed, okay? Plus you'll be able to see the recording on YouTube when I post it in a, later tonight, okay? So let me just give you some, um, uh, examples of discrete random variables to end class here, okay? Uh, so an example would be the sum of dice uh, when a pair of dice are thrown. Okay. Um, you know what, do you guys remember me talking about this casino game? Uh, does anybody remember what uh, casino game I'm referencing here? Yep, yep, yeah, this is a game of craps. Right, like, um, there's a finite number of possible outcomes here. So I'm looking at the value of the sum of two dice. So the possible outcomes of this, by just looking at the sums, when you throw two dice, the sums can be the numbers two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, or I could roll two sixes and they sum to 12. So like there is a finite number of possible outcomes here, okay? And again, it's a random outcome, all right? Because obviously if, if I knew, you know, what the sum would be on a pair of dice every time I threw it, I would still be living in Las Vegas. I'd be living a very different life, okay? If only, right? Uh, and it can be other things too, like, um, you know, the number of puppies in a litter. You know, there's a finite number of puppies that can, you know, come out in a litter when, when, when they're born, okay? And this could be like, you know, one, two, three, four, to whatever the possible max value is here. Or you can even talk about things like the number of games the World Series will last. You know, uh, the World Series is the best of four series, okay? So that means they could have, or best of seven, excuse me. So that means the World Series can last four games, five games, six games, or seven games, okay? So in this section here, what we're going to spend the next two class periods talking about, we're just going to be talking about just the discrete random variables.
So there's really three main topics that we're going to cover over the next week of class with this, okay? There's going to be something called the probability distribution. Okay, that's what we're going to learn next class. Also, next class, we're going to learn something called expected value. And then finally, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn about something called the binomial distribution. Okay. And here's, here's how I think the, the schedule is going to go. We're going to cover um, a probability distribution and expected value in the first half of class on Thursday. I'll start the binomial distribution um, at the tail end of class on Thursday, and then I will finish it up um, in the first hour of review day on next class on next Tuesday. And then I'll spend, you know, how much ever time next Tuesday we have left just doing a review for you. Okay. All right. Does that sound okay with everybody? All right. I hope so. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop the uh, recording right now.